We all love the Switch, but what we don't love is how expensive the games can get. And believe me, I know. Good news, every game in this video today is completely free. And sure, most if not all of them have microtransactions or loot boxes, but I have specifically picked games that you don't need to do that. This is the fourth one of these videos I have made, with one of these videos having 3 million views. Thank you for that. So if you don't see your favorite free Switch game today, whether that be Fortnite, or Fortnite, I can't think of something else. Chances are, probably most definitely have reviewed that in one of the other videos, and I'm not going over those again today. So after this video, check out those three other videos. The three million viewed one had 67,000 likes. If we can beat that and get 70,000 likes on this video, I would be happy. And of course, subscribe if you haven't, drop a comment below, share the video. A lot of these games are multiplayer and co-op games, so yes, yeah, share the video with friends that you want to play these games with. From the award-winning creators of Journey comes Sky, Children of the Light. It's a very cute social adventure game that will warm your heart. Sky has a beautifully animated world full of vibrant color, seven different realms, and faceless strangers for you to encounter and high-five with as you share your game with other players playing in the same world. You'll see them running around as shadows, interacting with the world themselves, and maybe even solving puzzles for you. You can grow even deeper connections connections with players, not using in-game voice chat or typing words, but by sharing candles and using emotes. The more you interact with another player, the more interactions you unlock. You can even give them a nickname. They won't ever know what that nickname is, but that's just how you will know them and recognize them in the future. Like my new friends here, Stan and Fred. As for the gameplay, you fly around the realms discovering spirits and puzzles. It's an adorable little game that's all about flying around and making new sort of friends. All right, Apex. Yeah. <laughs> Apex is a battle royale game, but in my opinion, it feels really different to your typical BR. In a good way, there was once a time I was addicted to this game on PC and managed to get pretty decent at it. Each character you can pick between have their own abilities, ultimate ability, and play styles. Mixing these characters into a well-oiled team is key to victory. Whereas some battle royales offer solo, duo, trios, and quads for players, Apex has always been so focused on trios, with lobbies capped at 60 players. Which is what makes it feel so different. Only 20 teams competing for the crown, and you can always expect the teams to have three players. The gameplay is fast, furious, and fun. Now again, I do love the game. And it still has a booming community of players and viewers on Twitch, but the Switch version just doesn't hit right. I appreciate the time and effort put into porting the game, but it just didn't work out in my opinion. The visuals are an utter disaster. Even the characters in the menu screen are so blurry that it hurts my eyes trying to focus on them. While waiting to drop, you can forget to see anything. As you get into the game, it runs smooth enough and clearly keeping that 30 FPS was the focus here. And it feels like they achieved that, but at what cost? It's still too hard to make out anything, even a few feet in front of your face. And you can forget about trying to use any long range weapons like snipers. It's an ugly, hideous mess. That even at 30 FPS, it still feels slow and chunky for a competitive game. To make matters even worse, even since launch, I have never managed to find a game with Switch only players. The lobby queues only have one or two people searching at a time. So cross platform is the only way to get into a game. Meaning you're playing like this, while literally everyone else is playing like this. It's on the Switch. It's free. Good thing Nintendo refuses to upgrade its hardware, huh? <laughs> oh, what a great time we're having with all these free Switch games that I'm bringing you to play that are free, that are saving you money, money that you might now have to spend on something else. Like, oh, I don't know, maybe um, a pair of Raycons? Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Thank you, Raycon. For more on these little bad boys, we're gonna go to Otherwood. Did someone say free? We're in summer, baby! Which, for me, is the busiest time of the year, so I'm always sat right here at my computer doing work. <laughs> but you might actually be outdoors enjoying the sun. Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, make sure you have 
some Raycons with you. Raycons are fresh, stylish earbuds that have amazing sound quality. They're comfortable to wear while still being noise isolating. My favorite part is that they have six hours of playtime. And whenever you're done listening, you can put them back into this charging pod and it charges them back up. So if you still somehow don't have a repair, a repair? Don't have your own pair of Raycons, get them by clicking that link in the description or going to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get 15% off your purchase. Oh yeah, and they even have a 45 day free return policy. So there's no harm in trying them out and supporting my channel. Speaking of free, uh, let's get back to saving you money with these free Switch games. Here's one that surprised me. Retrograde Arena. It gave off big Geometry Wars vibes, both in its art style and gameplay, but it plays completely differently. It's a multiplayer twin stick shooter for up to six players, but the catch is bullets don't kill anyone. The environment does. You use the weapons as your tools, knocking enemies around, trying to force them into bumping a red wall or death block. It's all physics based, even down to using your own weapons recoil to propel yourself or evade opponents attacks. I ended up really liking this one. It's a fun little game and I'm apparently kind of good at it. There's a bunch of different weapon pickups like machine gun, shotgun, even a weapon that creates a moving barrier that will ricochet enemy bullets. Each gun has different strengths and reactions. The shotgun is great for moving with some serious speed and avoiding those red walls moments before an enemy shoves you in a one. There's also other game modes like capture the crown, which was great as it felt more like it came down to personal movement skills rather than just blasting away at enemies. The game is packed full of nice little surprises too, like a lengthy list of achievements to complete and a load of skins and effects to unlock for your little drone thing. Give this one a shot, it's not bad. While Mario 35 has been flicked into Nintendo's waste bin, thankfully, Pac-Man 99 lives on and completely free to play as long as you subscribe to Nintendo's online service. Believe it or not, I had never played this one until now. I'm not a huge fan of Pac-Man. I'm sorry, Pac-Man guy. There's all these tingles running up and down my nipples. Pac -Man! But this Pac-Man 99 is pretty good. <laughs> Once again, you find yourself playing an old school retro classic at the same time as 99 other players battle royale style. Last Pac standing wins. As you play, you eat ghosties, you'll send jammer Pac-Man to your opponents. These jammers suck. They slow you down to a crawl. And if you get too many on you at once, you'll end up going slower than 2020 did. It was a slow year. And there isn't a feeling any more satisfying than building up a massive ghost train and gobbling them up all at once. Just don't touch the red Pac-Man, apparently. It's bad news bears. You done did die. Hmm. Don't have a way to segue. RPG Maker MV Player. Oh, I've been excited to talk about this one. So the RPG Maker series has been around for years. It's a great concept. Give players the tools to create their own RPGs and then download what other people have made to forever play endless RPGs. Essentially Mario Maker, but for weebs. I'm kidding. <laughs> but let me warn you, there is no quality control here. First, you gotta actually download a creation, which takes way longer than I thought it would. I found two games, Heroes Voyage and Last Mail. First up, I played Heroes Voyage and that was broken. You start just plopped into a tavern with four characters and no backstory. Everyone keeps telling you to find the old man and when you do, he just laughs at you and tells you you need to find 15 wood. One down, 14 to go. How hard can it be? Turns out not hard at all because I went to the forest and discovered you can pick up things like mushroom and wood, but the game doesn't know you already picked up each item. So as long as you find one of these, you can just pick it up a billion times. I went back to the old man with my five 5,000 wood, but each time I talked to him, he would take 15 and then loop back to asking for 15 more again. I did that until I was all out of wood and he still wanted more. He was wood insatiable. So game two, the last mail. Wait. This one actually had a backstory, even a full Star Wars intro. Then a pretty decent little cutscene with these characters talking to me and 
Oh, Cindy, settle down. Apparently, my so-called friends here are betraying me, injecting me with an unknown drug, and throwing me into a portal to the future where they plan on it being only women, and for some reason, they need me to be there as the only man. What did I do to deserve to this anyway? I guess RPG Maker doesn't come with a spell checker. We've got a load of men to kill before we rule the world. That is by far the greatest line in a video game game ever. <laughs> So you wake up in the future in a place called Bunny Town. Immediately upon entering the town, our hero yells, They're all women? Where are the guys? Like that would be the first thing you'd notice. You see like three or four girls, you're like, Where are the guys? Some girls notice you're a man and take you to their house to keep you safe. Mm-hmm. I see where this is going. They start stressing out over what to do with you and the game tells you to go downstairs and calm everyone down. More like go downstairs and mansplain. Turns out there was air pollution that suffocates men's ability to breathe to death. Okay, that is the greatest sentence ever in a video game. The girls tell you that you're the last male alive and the main character says, Then all my friends and family, yeah, they're dead. Yep, it's been 900 years and you know that already, peepees or not, <laughs> they've been dead a while. You're told to take a bath and then suddenly, oh, who saw this coming? Our character asks how babies are made in this future and she says, they do drafts on us and one lucky woman will travel to the forbidden land and get pregnant there. Oh, uh, uh come again? What? What is happening in this video game maker's clearly male brain that he thinks anyone would consider that scenario lucky? And now she's forcing me to bang in the bath. Next. <laughs> Super Bomberman R online. Super Bomberman R released alongside the Switch back in 2017. And I didn't really like it. But this online one is completely different. It's pretty much like Pac-Man 99, but with Bomberman and 64 people. Battle 64 is the mode where you slug it out with everyone. You start with three other players on your level and you can see all the other games going on around the side of the screen. If you manage to win your area by just playing classic Bomberman, you either move on to another winner's area or they'll come to yours. Then the next round starts and so on until one Bomberman is left. It's fun. It's Bomber Man. The game comes complete with Bomber Pass, which is Battle Pass, skins and emotes, and you know, the whole free to play flair. Even unlockable music from Silent Hill. I know they're both Konami, but that's that's still really random. You like my new shirt, Zach? <laughs> yes. Available now at the Beat'em Ups merch store. Which, by the way, I finally have a merch shelf. So now you don't have to find my, it's just there. And it's on my YouTube page. You can go to the store. You can find everything. And this is some of my new merch. It's kind of not Beat'em Ups merch. It's Wood and Eric show merch, which is my podcast, which isn't a podcast. All that matters is I have a merch shelf now. So if you want to grab yourself a t-shirt or something, I'd really appreciate it. Fighting X Slayer Another Dash is a fighting game so intense. They felt the need to spell the title of the game in all caps. Sadly, the intro voiceover doesn't have nearly that level of intensity. Fighting EX Layer! I could have done a better job than that. Fighting, Fighting X, X Layer! Layer. It's better than what they did. Turns out this game is kind of free. You can't play the online unless you purchase the full game, which is $30. But you can use offline and the arcade mode for free with four characters, yeah. You unlock another 14 if you buy the game. That's fine though, I mean free is free. And honestly, this is a good fighter. It feels similar to Street Fighter, which as it turns out, shouldn't be a surprise. It's a spiritual successor to Fighting Layer and Street Street Fighter X, even made by the same dev team. There's some really nice character design here. They all look like My Hero Academia characters. Also, Terry is here. I guess he's taking a break from Smash. Although, I wanna say, Darun is f***ing OP. Everyone else I can beat no problem, but that dude is broken. I'm not big on fighters though, but it's not bad, try it out. Spell break. It's literally just Fortnite with less personality. Don't at me. It's not bad by any means, and it looks decent and plays well. It's just pretty cookie cutter. There are different classes you can play as, each with different elemental skills. I usually stick with Fire Boy. You'll begin the game with a set fire gauntlet. You can't change that, but you can pick up other gauntlets for your left arm, and you can switch them out as you play and find better ones. It is fun mixing up elemental types, having fire and lightning, or wind and ice. Each gauntlet will have 
have a basic attack that allows you to shoot off blasts and one bigger special move that will go on cooldown. Like with fire, it creates a giant flame wall. As you loot around the world, you can find drops that power you up, upgrade your spells, or give you extra special abilities. I prefer the one that allows you to take flight Superman style. I did have to wait six minutes to even get into a game. I almost quit. I was like, I guess no one's playing anymore. If you can find a game, it's not, it's really not bad. I saved Vigor for almost last because I think it might be my favorite in the video. The game starts you offline in your home base. Your base starts fairly dilapidated in need of some serious renovations. When you begin to rebuild it, you'll gain access to new crafting abilities like making better weapons or ammo. To do that, you need supplies. To get supplies, you need a journey out into an area of the world. Once you select where you want to go, the game will create an instance for you. These instances will be filled with a bunch of other players who will also be joining with the goal of scavenging around the area finding as many supplies as they can to fix their bases. The catch is, if you die, you lose everything. That said, you do have a range of emotes you can use to communicate with players like waving to say hi, which I use to try and convey I'm not interested in killing each other, which works sometimes. This guy tried to slay me until he realized I was trying to wave, and then after looting for a little bit, we just went our separate ways. Other times, it backfired, and I shouldn't have turned my back on someone after thinking we were cool. Other than looting, there are goals and events around each instance, like finding a safe full of amazing loot, but it takes a long freaking time to unlock. Every player knows where it is, but only one player can keep it. If you don't want to stick around until the end of an instance, you don't need to. Every player is free free to leave whenever they want, as long as they can get to an exit. Then, when you're back at base, get to work upgrading and improving, creating that lovely and all addicting gameplay loop. Immediately, the visuals stood out to me. While it suffers from a bit of Switch blur, it's still pretty damn impressive. A really impressive looking game, both in handheld and on the TV. All things considered, of course, don't go comparing it to the PlayStation or Xbox versions, but I still think it's a pretty solid port. It also plays at a really smooth 30 FPS, and considering this game only has crossplay with Xbox, which is also locked at 30 FPS for some reason, I'd say there's no reason not to play this one on Switch. Knockout City took a little bit to grow on me, but I'm starting to like it. It's a ball game that pits 4v4 in an arena filled with balls. Just pick up a ball and throw it. <laughs> Everyone has two hit points. Get hit by a ball twice and you're knocked out and a point goes to the other team. But there are a bunch of ways that you can get the advantage in situations. If you time it right, you can catch a ball being thrown at you. You could also just dodge, but catching it is way cooler. There's a limited amount of balls around the map, so if there isn't one near you, just get a teammate to call up on the ground and use them instead. And you can charge up your teammate shot too and create a massive explosion at the impact site. It's fast, smooth, and really fun to play. Here's me showing off with a clip of the other team being one point away from winning the game. It was just me and three of them and no balls around. I whip around and out of nowhere, this dude is hurling one at me. I somehow split second react and catch it and now I can see that these two guys just need one more hit and the game is mine so all I gotta do is just find the right opening and make sure I hit one of them when they don't expect it and Gold team wins. not gonna lie that felt pretty good and it was that moment that I had the oh, okay yeah this is pretty fun I recommend getting some balls and giving this one a shot I mean again it's free these are all free why not give it a try there you go another 10 games that you don't have to spend a dollar on at this point there's about 40 really good games on the switch that are completely free to play so let me know your absolute favorite one down below and maybe I haven't talked about it yet and I can put it in the next video remember like the video we're trying to get 70,000 likes. Check out the brand new merch shelf down below. See if there's something that you like. While you're going down there, look in the description too and check out the sponsor of this video, Raycon. Thank you again for sponsoring. And uh, lastly, Zach, bring it on in. Bring it on in. You know what it is. You know what it looks like. Hair flip. Oh, oh God. You know, normally when you hair flip and you head bang, you're supposed to go forward with your neck, not to the side. 
that's when you might crack or pull something. Just a little tip for when you are hair flipping on that subscribe button, which you should do now for my broken neck. Oh.